Look at how gorgeous she is. Isn't it a beauty? And look at that symmetry. It's very cool looking, just like a scorpion. So do you have stick insects or any kind of insect and you would like to pin them, like to preserve them or display them? Then watch this video and I'll show you step by step how to do this. What's up everybody, my name is Hilmar, I'm a biology student, crazy about animals and you are watching BioVlog Wild, the channel if you want to know more about animals in the amazing world of biology. And today I want to talk about death. So for a few months now I've been keeping insects. These are giant prickly stick insects. They're absolutely huge, very cool looking insects. They are native to Australia and the females can grow up to about 8 to 9 inches I believe. I think 16 centimeters and I got about 60 of them, four of which are fully mature females. However, two of them died last week, so that's kind of a bummer. All living things eventually die. It's very sad, but it's the reality. But I think it would be a waste to just throw them away in the garbage can. I think it would be nice to pin them, preserve them. So today I'm going to show you how to pin these insects. So do you have stick insects or any kind of insect and you would like to pin them, like to preserve them or display them? Then watch this video and I'll show you step by step how to do this. So first things first, what do you need? Well, you need something to pin the insects on. In this case, I use a piece of styrofoam. It's kind of a soft foam, but you can use cardboard or a very soft wood, anything that you can put needles in. So what about tools? Well, you don't necessarily need them, but I got this whole set of pincers and razors and scissors and stuff. You don't really need them, but it's useful. Then of course you need pins. I got these from a local store. These are specialized pins made for pinning insects, but you can basically use like any kind of needle. And then I got a bottle of rubbing alcohol and I'll tell you later why. And of course, the stick insects. So the first thing you wanna do when you find a dead insect or your insects die is either put them in a freezer or put them in alcohol and that is to preserve the body and make sure that all the bacteria and fungi or diseases die and prevent that it starts rotting from the inside out because that is something you definitely don't want to happen. So two of my adult females died last week. Very sad, I was very sad, but it's part of nature. So I put them in a bottle. They've been soaking in alcohol for about four days now, I think. Definitely enough, bacteria are dead, so we can open this and start pinning them. So first, opening the bottle <coughs> is probably gonna smell a little bit. Yep, that's definitely alcohol. So before I'm taking these insects out and putting them on the foam, I'm first putting some toilet paper on there just to make sure that all the alcohol that's still in the body doesn't completely soak the foam first. So we got some toilet paper on here. So then it's time to take the insects out of the alcohol and I use one of my pincers just to make sure that my fingers don't have to touch the alcohol. I don't like that very much. And I grab hold of one of the legs, pull it out, let it drip out a little bit, just like that. And I'll put it on the toilet paper. Right. Now, we can close the lid of this bottle. We don't need that anymore. Right, so we got here a beautiful little stick insect. So one of the cool things about insects is that they have an external skeleton. They don't have bones like we do. Instead, they have kind of a hardened skin. And actually, that hard external skeleton is the reason that insects, or arthropods in general, are the most successful group of animals on Earth. So we got our insect and we got our piece of foam we see that there was actually still some alcohol left in that insect. So we're gonna put this toilet paper away. So one of the things you might stumble upon is that the insect has stiffened a little bit. And that's very common. That just happens to dead animals, particularly insects, because they have a hard external skeleton and their joints are covered in membranes. And when the insect dies, those membranes harden, which makes it harder for you to get the insect in the right position. And that's why you use pins to put all the little appendages and legs and stuff precisely the way you want it. 
Now, what you can do is try to loosen those joints, to loosen those membranes by using some alcohol or maybe even putting it in warm water. That helps to soften the membranes and then it's easier for you to adjust all the little legs in the right position. Now, this one has been soaking in alcohol for quite a bit now and that has kind of stiffened it, maybe a little bit too much, but that doesn't matter. We're gonna use those pins to put everything in the right position. So first what I wanna do is take out the guts and that is because there might still be some fruit left in there and even though it's been soaking in the alcohol for quite a while now, it could easily start rotting and that's something we don't want to happen. So I just flip it over and we're gonna cut through its belly. So I got this very sharp razor, it's specially made for, you know, dissecting animals and stuff. And we are just cutting through, I don't wanna go too far, just enough to get to the intestines. And then I will be using one of my favorite pincers, those curved forks, to get into its belly and take out all that stuff that you don't want in there. And you can see that the alcohol has already done some of the work. Now, not all of it, so we're gonna take this out. And this is an adult female, which means that it can lay eggs. So there might still actually be some eggs in there. I don't think they will be viable after soaking four days in alcohol. So don't get your hopes up. Anyway, we're gonna go all the way in and grab everything we can take everything out. I do see some eggs in here. They're kind of hidden away. The alcohol has done a good job in taking most of, yes, there we do have an egg. Can you see it? Just like that. And there we have another one. So I'm just taking everything out. Doesn't really matter as long as I don't damage the exoskeleton. These are fairly soft bodied insects. If you compare it to like beetles, they are fairly soft bodied. And that means that it's very easy for these insects to start rotting or lose its shape. Now, I'm taking everything out. Not very, can't really distinguish all the different things, but oh, there's a lot of eggs in there. Oh my, oh my God. Just look at that. Can you see it? There's like, I'm opening its abdomen and you see to the sides, there's a lot of eggs still in there, developing. You can even see some very young eggs in there as well. Just taking everything out. Take your time to get everything out because you don't want to rush this part. It would be a waste if you have pinned the whole insect and dried it and eventually it starts rotting. That would be a waste. So I might want to cut it open a little further to a little further to reach into the thorax because there's some more organs in there and I don't want it to rot so getting it open a little further just like that and inserting my little pincers just taking everything out there's a lot of muscle tissue in there as well some more eggs some intestines Yep, reaching all up into the thorax, just pulling everything out, being careful not to rupture. Yeah, just look at that. That's a very big chunk of, I think it's muscle tissue and maybe some part of the intestines, the stomach. Right, so I think I got most of it. It's very difficult to get everything out, but as long as you get most of it, it'll, it'll be fine. Maybe take some more out of the tip of the tail. You might easily forget that. Just like that. Yep, and there's another egg. There we go. So we cleaned up this very nice looking specimen. There's still a little left there. Oh, that's it. We got all the guts in here and we can just throw this away. We took the guts out of this very nice looking specimen, but because this is a very soft-bodied insect, relatively, 
we want to fill up the cavity that we just created. And to do that, we can use some tissue like these. You can just buy them in any store. They're usually used to remove makeup and stuff. And I will fold these over. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as it can be shaped a little bit. And we're just gonna insert it into its body. Maybe cut off the end because it's a little bit too long, I suppose. We got his body all filled up here and you can still see some of the tissue. Doesn't really matter. You can, if you want, you can just stitch the walls back together, but it will be at the bottom so you won't really see it. Um, now we're gonna put it back here. And the next thing I wanna do is grab some of the needles, of the pins, and just take one. These are fairly big pins, I think size four. And we're gonna pin one of these needles right through its thorax, which is basically like our chest or our back. And I wanna pin it just in front of the wings, not to damage these. And you will notice that the males have fairly large wings. So if you wanna mount a male, there's a different procedure. And I will show you that in another video. But this is a mature female and she has very small wings. So that makes it easier for us to pin this insect. And I will use this pin and put it through its thorax in the hardest part of its body. And there it goes, put it right through. And we're gonna mount it to the piece of foam, just like that. And we wanna put it a little bit off the ground. We want to get the insect in the most natural position as possible. And that's what we use the pins for, to put the legs in the position that we we actually think it's right. So that's that. Then we want to use some more pins to stabilize its body before we start pinning the legs, just like that, just on the side of its abdomen to make sure that it doesn't rotate while we're working on it, just like that. Good. And I think I dropped a needle. Yep, there it is. Uh. So basically what I do when I start pinning insects is just make these little crosses and put the appendages between so they can move either way. And that tends to work for me. And what you wanna do is put the legs and all the appendages in a position that is as natural looking as possible. And to do that, you want to get this symmetry along its body axis. So you want the left half and the right half to look kind of similar. That means that you have to use these pins to maybe adjust the legs a little bit. And what I do here is I got these legs. I want these legs to go sideways. And to do that, I am pinning it from behind. So one of the legs was pulling this way and I put a pin that way to hold it in place so it doesn't go anywhere. So I put this needle right here and then I put another needle in front of it just to make sure that it doesn't move while I'm working with it, just like that. And every once in a while, I just check up from above and from different views to check if everything is still symmetrical, because that, for me, that's very important. So I wanna get these legs just like that, put it back a little bit, just like that, and I'm gonna put Needle there. This leg is twisted a little bit. That just happened because I put it in alcohol for like four days. It stiffened the body a little bit. So I gotta work with this. So I'm trying to get this leg looking just like the other one, which is very difficult actually. Push it down just a little farther. Just like that. Now, I wanna start with the front legs and get these pointing forward a little bit, just like that. And this leg is pulling upwards a little bit, so I'm gonna put a pin just right over there so it doesn't move forward. And I do that same thing with this right leg, put it in the same position. That looks good fairly symmetrical, then 
another pin behind just to make sure that it doesn't go the other way when I'm not looking. So this is a very nice looking specimen. It lost one of its front legs and it's missing kind of a little part of its antennae. That just happens. These stick insects tend to lose their legs quite often. That is actually part of their defense mechanism. So when a predator grabs hold of one of their legs, then the stick insect can just let loose of its leg and walk freely. Well, the predator is still startled by the fact that it's just holding a leg and the insect has gone. So that's one of its defense mechanisms or escape mechanisms. And you might think, doesn't that kill the insect? Well, it did lose its leg, but these insects are fairly good in adjusting their lifestyle and they have still another five legs to walk with. For them, it doesn't really matter how many legs they have. I've seen stick insects with just three legs working just fine. A fun fact though, is that they can actually regrow these legs. So with each mold that they do, they can grow back their old leg. So it doesn't really matter for them. They can just grow back their legs. But it takes a little time before that leg is fully grown back. So it might take like two or three molds before their lost leg has become fully grown again. Now, this one was probably already mature when it lost its front leg. So an adult female won't mold again. So that means that she can grow back the legs that she lost. And that's why you see that she's still missing part of her front leg. Still though, she's a very, very nice looking specimen. I'm very happy with this one. And the good thing is I don't have to do very much to get everything in the right place. Gotta pin these front legs a little further, just like that. I wanna get them down a little further, just like that. That's very good looking. You're a pretty little thing, aren't you? Well, I think it is almost done. So the last thing that I might wanna do is get these abdomen up a little further, just like that. So the funny thing about these giant prickly stick insects is that when they are threatened by a predator of some sort, they will curl up their abdomen just like that and they will pretend to be a scorpion. And it actually works. So at first, a giant prickly stick insect will just try to hide and keep as still as possible. I mean, they're stick insects. They try to pretend to be a branch. But as a last resort, when a bird gets too close, they can use that tail to pretend to be a scorpion. Crazy, right? So I think this specimen is actually pretty much done. I'm gonna take these eggs and put them over here for later use. I'm really, really curious whether they're gonna hatch. I don't think so, but you never know. Nature's full of surprises. Now, I think this specimen turned out very nicely. Look at how gorgeous she is. Isn't it a beauty? And look at that symmetry. It's very cool looking, just like a scorpion. Just like that, look at that. Isn't it amazing? I'm gonna let it dry out for a few days and see how it turned out. I think it will be fine. And then I will put it on the wall so I can look at it every day that sounds weird <laughs> so that's how you pin an insect if you ever stumble upon a dead insect or you got insects yourself and one of them died recently then you know how to pin them and how to preserve them did you like this video give a thumbs up if you want to see more videos just like this subscribe to BioVlog Wild and take a look at my other videos this was BioVlog Wild see you next time